sometimes as a reviewer, companies will send me something I didn't even know I wanted. And this is one of those cases. Welcome back to Shoe Lights. Today I've got the Cyan Sky HS6R headlamp. And this is a headlamp that Science Sky sent me for review, and they told me it was going to be a multifunction headlamp with flood and throw and red, and I was like thinking, oh man, it's like they put everything but the kitchen sink in a headlamp. I don't know if that's a good thing. Well, I've been testing it for a couple weeks now, and I'm here to say that I like it a lot. I like it so much that it will probably replace my venerable Sofren SP40. I have a bunch of headlamps, and some of them go back really far. I got a couple black diamonds here. I got this one. I got this black diamond. I've got the SP40 from Sofren. I got other headlamps that are not even on screen right now. I got a bunch of headlamps, okay? And the fact of the matter is that unlike my flashlights, I don't really care about, you know, the exact tint or the exact lumens out of a headlamp because when I put a headlamp on, I'm thinking tool. I'm thinking I'm just going to use this as a tool. I'm going to get some jobs done. I'm soldering something or I'm working under the car. And it's just I, at that point, all of a sudden, I'm not so concerned about the light itself, if that makes sense. But then here comes this light, which has a really floody, almost mule-like high CRI option that's just so perfect. So definitely stick around and wait for that part of the video when I show it. It just looks so good. But why this is such a winner to me is because, one, I love the design. Uh, let's take a look at the SP40, which was my headlamp of choice up until this guy. The SP40 is a little odd looking to non-flashlight people because it's got this long 18650 tube and it hangs out to one side. So it goes, you know, on your forehead like this and the light comes out on a side. So you can pick the left or the right by where you flip it. And then it rotates downward or upward on this kind of elastomer kind of uh, rubbery plate here, which, you know, it's effective. It's low tech, but it's effective. It works. And then um, where I think that this one is better is, first off, it just looks more like a headlamp should look. I know that shouldn't really matter, but the fact that it's like got the lights in the center and it's a little bit more like central on your forehead and boxy, I like it more than this tube. It looks more like, you know, the black diamond kind of headlamps that we're used to where this thing goes in the middle of your forehead and all the lights are right in the middle, like, you know, like you're a miner, you know? It just looks a little more like what we expect. Another reason that I prefer this light to this one is it's a little bit heavier, but you get a lot for the weight difference. So the SP40 here with a battery is about 152 grams. The Scion Sky here is 164 grams, okay? There you go, 164. So that's kind of, you know, very similar. But the difference is that this one is all metal construction, meaning not only the housing is metal, not only are these caps metal, but then the plate right here behind the very wide and comfortable band is also metal. And then the you know, little loops here that hold it in place that let you adjust it are all metal. I just feel like this is a much more robust light than the rubber that's on this one. So that's kind of a cool thing. Also, the fact that this band is so wide, it just makes it really nice and comfortable. I found the Sofren nice and comfortable as well, but this one is even just like it holds it better. It just, it doesn't want to slip around as much. On the Sofren, because it did want to slip around a little bit, I put the top strap, you know, over my head like this. But if you've ever worn one of these, it does help the light stay in place, but it also kind of gives you like this double mohawk on your hair that sticks up from both sides. So it's not a great look. I'd much rather wear a kind of thick headband like this. Remember when I said that this light does everything? Well, if we take a look at the box here, the light claims to be basically three lights in one. Claims to be a high intensity spotlight, 
which is, should be about 1,400 lumens, cl- according to them. And it's powered by a luminous SST40, kind of a low CRI, um, but throwy and very bright light. Then next to it, it has a high CRI, luminous SST20, and that's uh, going to be a better tint because I believe it's about 4,000K. We'll take a look in a second. And it's high CRI, and it's very floody this time instead of throwy. And then lastly, there's two lights on the side here are both red, and then the red light should work by preserving your night vision. So let's take a look at it really quickly and note that it's got two buttons for operation. It's got a button on the side, which would be the throwy SST40. And then there's a button on the top, which is the high CRI floody SST20 and red. So if you hit this button and hold it on the side, it's going to turn on this one and then taps will cycle through the different levels. And whatever level you leave it on, if you press and hold again, it turns off and memorizes that mode. So I can turn it back on and be on low again. There isn't a uh, shortcut to moonlight or low. There's not even a moonlight. There's just low. And what I mean by that is if I go to, let's say, a high mode and press and hold to turn it off, if I press and hold to turn on, of course, it's just going back to that mode. There's no special long press to go to moonlight because we're already long pressing to turn it on. However, up here on this little uh, flat kind of uh, metallic looking button, if you long press, it turns on the floody SST20. This is the high CRI light. And when you tap, you go through the modes on that. It then ends up on red, and one more tap will go to red flashing. I suppose this would be used if you were like walking at night or running and you wanted to be seen. Um, I don't especially like this flash. I kind of feel like if I wanted to be seen, I would want a kind of a more rapid flash than this. Um, but I guess that's just opinion. No big deal. Another little tidbit here is that to get through these low, medium, high, you do have to go through the two reds. So I'll do low, medium, high, and then I have to go red, red, low again. So just something to know. I'm not going to show you what I tested on the lumen tube, but I do want to point out that they claim that the spotty light here, the spotty SST40, should be around 1400 lumens. I measured it around 1100, so a little less, but that blows away all my other headlamps. The uh, sofa in here, I usually get about 350 lumens on. It's a, I think this is a um, Samsung, well, it's a knockoff of a Samsung LH351D, uh, and it's uh, 4000K. Um, this one uh, is, as I said, this 350 lumens. This was about 1100, so it blows it away. And then all these guys, all these uh, black diamonds, uh, they range from anywhere from about 150 lumens to 300 lumens. So this spotlight destroys the other headlamps I have. This light is only spotty, so I would compare this uh, SST40 to the emitter there. However, I really love this floody emitter. So when we go outside in a moment, I'm going to show you why I fell in love. It just has a great look. It's it, this. It's so floody, it's almost like a um, mule. It's almost like a mule headlamp, and I've never had one of those. Let's take a look at the uh, tint and CRI values really quickly. Turn on the Sakonic here. Okay. And I'm going to go to high in all cases. So let's just make sure that I'm on high, low, low, medium, high. There we go. And let's aim it at here and take a reading. So this is the throwy SST40. And you can see that it is low CRI. It's about 68. And you can see that the R9 is a negative value, about negative 30 something. But let's go to the CCT. And you'll see that the CCT is a pretty pleasing uh, 4,800, so it's lower than 5,000 even. It's on the green side, but again, I mean, it, it, it's to be a throwy kind of uh, bright emitter. Green is not bad. I mean, your eye really responds well to green. Now let's go ahead and switch it over to the high CRI side. Let's take a reading. And you'll see that not only is it uh, below 4,000, it's about 3,800, which is great, but it's really neutral. So this is really pleasing to the eye. And look at the R9 value. The R9 value is almost perfect. And uh, look at the uh, CRI. It's insanely high. Look at that. All these 
uh, colors are reading so well. Now, I'm at kind of a low value here. Let me flick it up to a high value and note that when emitters get high, they tend to get rosier. So now let's take a look. Let me turn it off. And let's go back to this, and you'll see that, in fact, it's a little below BBL. So this thing goes from neutral to just slightly rosy. And I wouldn't want it insanely rosy, would I? I mean, if this, if I'm using high CRI light, I guess I care about color rendition. I guess I care about what I'm seeing. So I think that Cyan Sky just really nailed the emitters in this. They gave me what I need for throw. They gave me what I need for close-up work and uh, color rendition. So very happy with it. Let's go outside and take a look how it actually looks in real-world use. Okay, I'm outside and I'm going to test these three headlamps. I'm going to start with the black diamond. And notice that the black diamond is very spotty. And when I ramp it down, there's definitely pulse width modulation. You can see it uh, kind of going through the frame there. And that's on the fullest brightest it goes. And as I said, it's very spotty for close-up work. And if I look down here, down my little hallway here, you can see how it's uh, definitely a spot. All right, now let me switch to the SP40, the Sofern SP40, and you can see it's much warmer. And let me click it on, let's see here, medium and high. You see it's a spot, and then when I come out here like that, you can see how it looks, okay? Now, let's take a look at the Cyan Sky. We'll uh, turn it on, on the spot, and that's on low, and then I can click to go medium and higher, and of course, the camera's blooming because it's so bright. But uh, let's go ahead and turn it off and switch to the flood, which I'm adoring. Look at how like mule-like and just floody that is. And if I click it to go to medium, you can see how even it is. And uh, there's high, okay. That's red, and then here's red flashing. Let's take a look down this uh, hallway here. So I'm on the uh, flood right now. And I'll go medium and high. And let me go ahead and switch to the throw. Here we go. And you can see how throw it is on low even. And then go to medium and high. It's just so bright. I think there's one more level. There you go. One more level. So bright. One interesting thing too about this is you can turn on both channels at once. So I can turn on this channel here and then set it to low, and then turn on the flood at the same time. So now I got the throw and the flood going here. Let me hold this, hold that in front, and you can see what I'm talking about. I can turn on both at the same time. I also want to point out that this came with a battery, and that it has a Type-C charging port on it, so you can charge right in the headlamp itself. This light has low voltage protection at about 2.6 volts, the battery cuts off completely, and at around 3.2 volts, the battery stretch kicks in, which means the lumens drop drastically to give you hours more light and give you a visual indicator that the battery is low. This is really the great way to do LVP. I think this headlamp is so good that the only thing that people might balk a little bit at is its price tag is about 75 bucks on Amazon, but it is on Amazon. You can get it from Cyan Sky directly from their store or on Amazon. I looked in my area, you can get it next day. And I don't think 74 is that bad when you consider that this black diamond and, you know, listen, flashlight enthusiasts might not think black diamond is very good, but they're really big in the hiking industry. And, um, this black diamond was about $74 and this thing blows it away in every way, shape and form. I mean, this thing is so clunky and heavy. It uses uh, double A's, um, which you know I used to think was a good idea, but I don't think that anymore. I think 18650s are a way better way to go. So if you want a really versatile, really well-made uh, headlamp, uh, this is my current headlamp that I'm using. So I can easily recommend this. All right, guys, I'll see you next time in the next video.